mode. Good afternoon. My name is Jacob Field from ripehouse.com.au and I'm just going to take this opportunity to thank you before we begin uh, and welcome my special guest today which is Jane Slack-Smith. Uh, we both really appreciate you taking the time out of your weekends uh, to, to take the time to, to learn about uh, property, to learn about Jane's approach to property and its approach that I uh, really thoroughly recommend. I, I have a lot of respect um, and admiration for what Jane does and, and continues to repeat and do um, throughout her property career. So it's a, it's a great honour and privilege to open up her speaking today uh, and her courses um, and content that she's revealing to us today in, in the webinar. It's a great honour to be able to see that. Um, so I, yeah, firstly just welcome you and thank you for your time and, and um, pass on thanks to Jane for, for coming and speaking with us. Um, we sort of thought about this webinar and, and, and getting together and actually doing it um, because it is something that's very relevant to a lot of people that use Ripe House as investors who are looking for property. Um, but particularly we're doing it this week because she mentioned to me throughout the week that she's going to be taking the courses offline um, and out of the market um, this coming Friday. Um, she probably can talk to the reasons why she's doing that because there are uh, definite reasons and the courses are not going to be becoming redundant, it's just they're going to be morphing it and changing so she'll reveal the differences and why she's doing that. The, um, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, she's put together a wonderful slide pack today of, of, um, of information and as you can see the, the title page here in front of us. So with that I might just uh, introduce Jane to our audience. Um, hello Jane. Hey, how are you going? It's uh, great to be here. I really appreciate your invitation, Jacob, and thank you so many people who have joined us on a Sunday afternoon and, and to those who will be joining us uh, later during the week when they hear the replay. But, uh, you know, as Jacob said, it was uh, one of those kind of little funny conversations that you have. I was telling him about this new course that I'm working on, your renovation success, and saying, you know, I've just seen how great this looks and the videos I've been out shooting on site on, on renovation stuff and locating properties and I really wanted to add Ripe House in as a tutorial into that uh, that pack. Um, I would grabbed John Edwards during the week, CEO of Residex and I sat him down for three hours and and really you know took everything I could out of his brain on, on what was happening in the Australian market and every time I keep talking to these great people I think oh my gosh there's someone else I wanted to add so Jacob you know, and I started chatting about Ripe House and the tutorial and I just mentioned in passing that uh, I was pulling these courses off the market they've been on the market for a year because I wanted to make them bigger and better and you know hopefully re-release them at the end of the year and he said gosh you know you've, you've got all this information come and chat to my people about what you're doing so uh, we kind of put our heads together didn't we Jacob? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think it's definitely uh, this information needs to get out there and, and people need to see it. I think the way you break it down and the steps that you, uh, well, I, I suppose as an investor myself, they make a lot of sense and, and they are the steps that I've sort of fumbled into, but to have them so eloquently sort of spaced out and, and broken into, into the courses, um, it's, a, it's a great way you present it. So that's why it's something I definitely wanted to open up to, to, to people who use Ripe House and um, I think it would suit their... Um, yeah, well, the, the the path they're in, the, the spot they're in the in the investment journey as well. So, yeah. Well, I guess without further ado, I, you know, what I wanted to do today is, you know, rather than just having one of those, uh, you know, hours where you hear someone gab away about stuff and tell you all about themselves, you know, I really want to share with you some really great content. And and for me, you know, I listen to a lot of webinars, and I'm still in my journey of education, and. Uh, you know, the ones that really mean the difference to me are the ones that where I understand exactly why I'm there. So, you know, you know why you're here. I want to share with you how you can grow your portfolio and put a million dollars in the bank. I'm going to give you today, and as I was just saying to Jacob before we got online, you know, an hour ago I was saying, gosh, there's so much more I can put in here. And I was writing frantically, you know, a step-by-step -step calculation that you can do yourself that I haven't seen in any of the courses that I've done over the years or any of the 130 books on my on my uh, bookshelf. So, you know, I'm really here to add some real value to you so that you can walk away from it with some tools and, and tips and resources that you can use. And uh, and also, as, you know, Jacob said, I am pulling my courses off in a, in a um, off the market at the end of, uh, from Friday the 29th of uh, 
of March 2013, they'll be back and double the price at the end of the year and people who buy them are going to get some really incredible bonuses. And just because of the relationship we have with Ripe House and you know how much I really believe in that product, I've got some, some extra um, benefits for those who are, are with Ripe House and here with us listening this week. So first of all, you know, let's, let's just get into it because I really want to get into the content. Um, first of all, the whole disclaimer, I'm not an investment advisor, financial planner, real estate agent or practicing accountant. So, you know, I'm a mortgage broker. You need to have your independent financial and legal advice specific to you when you need it. And, um, you know, I'm here to answer your questions and share with you some of my information and please at any time put some questions into the chat box. But I'm aware that it's, uh, you know, you've given us an hour and, and I'm going to you know, be uh, very respectful of that. So let's get down to the, you know, the, the big question everyone asks, is it possible to build a successful portfolio for the typical person? And the thing is, you really need to understand what the typical person is. And when Wiley's came to me a few years ago and asked me to write another property book, I kept saying no and they kept saying, you should do this. I kept saying, there's nothing new in property. And they said, well, it's the way that you tell it that people are interested in. And I, you know, the typical person doesn't think that property is within their reach. And my mission is to positively affect a million households and create wealth for them. So I wrote the book and as part of that, I needed to understand what a typical person looked like. And as you can see on the screen, you know, I did a, a lot of research into this and really what it showed me was what a average person looks like in the terms of what they earn. So males on average make $74,000 a year, females $59,000, home with two kids. You know, according to Residex, the average house price across Australia $444,000, the average loan $281,000, average credit card balance of $3,500. Now I looked at interest rates and said conservatively let's make them 8%. We all know they're currently closer to 5.5% at the moment, but the long-term average is about 7.5%. And I looked at a car repayment of $500 a month. Now, I threw all of that information together and I kind of, you know, tried to work out how could a person that looks like the typical person actually make money. And we all know we're not typical and, you know, we don't fall into what is average, especially if you're listening to this because, you know, the average person wouldn't be trying to uh, look at how they could grow a million dollars for their family and create that financial wealth. You know, most people are in there working day in, day out, just trying to get ahead. So we know we're not typical, but you know, we had to start somewhere. And essentially, you know, what I looked at was the average family, what they needed to do to put a million dollars in the bank. And in the first year, you know, they leveraged some of the equity in their home to buy an investment property. Now, according to RP Data Home Equity Reports, 45% of all Australians' homes are worth double what they paid for it. So a lot of us are sitting on equity in our homes that we don't even realise about. And then in year three, they do a renovation on the property. Now, the renovation dollars or budget comes from the growth that's been experienced by that property. So obviously you have to be buying the right property in the right place. And that's obviously you know, some of the tools like Rive House allows you to actually ascertain where that is. And some other tools I'll show you today. And then in year five, they buy a second investment property. And you know, that's kind of it. There's two properties that are going to be purchased. One now, a renovation done in year three, creating more yield, better rental yield and more equity. But also you can see here in this graph, year five, we buy a second investment property. Now, fast forward 15 years, you can see that the total value is over two and a half million dollars. The total equity is over one and a half million dollars. And the total debt, you know, it's just over a million dollars. So if your end game is sell your properties, pay the capital gains tax, pay the selling costs, there's a million dollars. And we've done that for a typical family on a typical income, making sure they can service that debt, buying the right property in the right place. So I guess, you know, the question is, how do I know this? Well, you know, I've been speaking for, you know, over seven years about how to build wealth through property. I've done that because I've done it myself. And over 10 years ago, my husband and I started to look at how we could achieve for our family our personal goals and our personal financial future that we wanted to achieve. You know, fast forward 10 years later, 
my husband doesn't work anymore, he's a portrait artist, I have the opportunity to speak to people you know, when I want and how I want. I have two very successful businesses that I, I get to run and I get to work with people all the time and in assisting them. So it's around about having the freedom of choice. And the way that we did that, just over 10 years ago, we bought one of our first properties that I'd love to show you, share with you here a little later on. But we used that as a stepping stone and we knew if we got that right, we could build the foundations to a portfolio, which is now worth over $7 million today. Pretty much takes care of itself. So, you know, not being typical, but, you know, taking, taking the knowledge of investors and making it suit us and then creating a system allowed us to buy and buy and buy again and buy again and build that portfolio. So, you know, I know that you can build a successful property portfolio. I know you can put a million dollars in the bank with just two properties, one renovation. And there's the book I even wrote about it. So, you know, it's, it is possible and this is, you know, being really successful and one of the reasons you know I mentioned I'm I've just creating a online your renovation success course at the moment is that so many people who enjoyed the book came back and said look we've done a lot of renovating for profit courses out there and you know there's not the hands on stuff of how to do things and how we talk to our trades and manage our trades and all of that and how do you actually do a specific uh, evaluation for a property with view of renovation so that's what's uh, in the wings at the moment and you know come may your innovation success will be uh, hit, hitting your screens. So I guess what I needed to look at was why was it so hard for people to actually build a successful property portfolio? If I could do the numbers and show that it was just two properties, you know, and in within 15 years put a million dollars in the bank, why aren't others doing that? Now if you look at the Australian tax office statistics, in actual fact, you know, there's over 1.7 million property investors in Australia and 73% of them only own one investment property. So we know that it takes more than one property really to create the wealth that might allow you to leave work and put money in the bank. But how many is it and why aren't more people doing it? And I think the reason is when I've you know worked with hundreds of people and spoken to thousands of people over the years, is that when I ask them about their properties and you know I'm from going to a seminar and and speaking to the taxi driver who says, yeah, I've got an investment property, it's a dud, I'd never do it again. Or people who come up to me when I you know, speak for Money Magazine, for instance, at HIA Home Show, they'll come up and say, look, it just, it seems so easy and everyone's out there buying property, but you know, it, it, they then can't afford it, what's going wrong? And I think from what I can distill of all the conversations I've had with all the people who haven't been happy with their investment decision, is that they actually start at the wrong end. They actually start with a property and it might be their home that they decided to you know, create an investment property out of. It might be a property they've inherited. It might just be you know, the property next door to dad that's for sale and the guy over the fence said, oh, if you buy it off me, I'll give it you a bit cheaper because there's no agent involved. You know, they start with a property. In actual fact, there's thousands of properties out there and they're looking at thousands and thousands of properties without any discernible difference in the understanding of why they're buying one or the over the other. And then they go, oh gosh, I've got this property, now I need to have finance. And there's, you know, there's so many banks and lenders out there. Every time we turn on the TV, there seems to be someone else wanting to give you money. So they then have to go through the process of understanding how all of these different lenders differ and what they're offering. And then they have they finally made it through to settlement and they go, oops, we've just worked out we can't afford the property. And so that you know they're at this stage where they're like, well I didn't realise it was going to actually cost me 25% of the rental income regularly for me to actually keep a property. And then by virtue of all of that, they then say, gosh, I spoke to this guy who's doing NRAS, granny flats, development, renovating, I want to do that too. And they roll out with their 300 square metre property in you know, Western Sydney thinking that they can put a granny flat on the back and the requirement is 350 square metres. And they can't facilitate that strategy on their property because they thought of it as an afterthought. And because they've only got one strategy, the one they usually buy and hold, they don't actually get to their goals. Now, as I said, if we're talking about building a successful property 
portfolio and being able to put a million dollars in the bank. For the typical type of person, then you need to actually understand the process. And this is the process that I have distilled and this is how I grew a $7 million property portfolio. You start with your goals. You understand clearly and concisely what that goal is. You then work out your property investing strategy. Now this is actually a function of the time frame to achieve your goals. So there's no point in having a, strat a goal that says, you know, I would like to have a million dollars in the bank in the next three years and your risk profile and your strategies buy and hold and do nothing. It's going to be very, very hard to achieve. So you need to have an understanding of the risk of the strategy and your personal risk and your time frame of your goals. And then affordability. You need to work out if you can afford this before you actually get in and buy the property. And then because you understand what your strategy is, then you look at finance. Now, you're not looking at lots of different banks and lots of different products. If you have a specific strategy, then there's only going to be a number of lenders that actually assist you with that, with the right policy. So for instance, I spoke to a client recently, you know, they had a strategy around um, adding an, an extra uh, dwelling on the back of their property. Now they had a 90% loan to value ratio. The lender, which is one of the big four, came back and said, well, if you're going to put a second dwelling on, we need a 60% loan to value ratio. So not only did they have to front with the construction costs, but a whole lot more money. So knowing that up front and working with your mortgage broker up front, you actually have the ability to have a strategy that gets you the finance strategy that fits your own, what you want to do. If your strategy is to renovate uh, really quickly and access equity, some lenders will not let you have a revaluation within six months. So you need to know that. So that's why working with the right finance institutions and understanding the policies gets you on track to building a successful portfolio. And then you're looking at the property. Now we're not looking at thousands. We're not looking at 12,000 suburbs. You know, and it's like using the Ripe House um, uh, program. You can actually start targeting the suburbs and then down to the streets and then down to the properties that are going to fit what you need to do. And that's the process. That's a successful process that allows you to build a portfolio that you can build on. So this is the process that you know I teach. <clears throat> this is the process I teach in my courses. This is the, the process I follow myself. This is the process that I believe assists you in understanding how you can build a portfolio. And as you can see, you know, the top three up there are the goals. And I guess it's probably you know, relevant now, you know, there's uh, quite a few people online. I'm just going to run a, a quick little poll just to see how many of you or how many properties you actually have. So I'm just going to launch this poll now. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Just give me an indication of how many properties that you have. So vote. Okay, I'm going to close it off. So let me just have a quick look here. So we've got quite a few people, about 30% have two properties, over 30% have three or more. So, you know, there's, you've got, I guess, you know, some quite um, experienced property investors in, in the, the webinar at the moment. And the challenge that I give you is that, you know, it's, it's often fine to, you know, listen to these webinars and read books and you start hearing people talking about goal setting and you're like, yeah, yeah, been there, done that and switch off. But, you know, I've had people go through my, um, my online courses and, you know, they've got 10, 12 properties and I've really challenged them and talked to them about what their specific goals are and what they're trying to work towards and then had them use the tools in the course to go and evaluate each property as if they're buying it for the first time. And some of them have gone out and sold properties based on the fact that they realised the property didn't actually fit their portfolio. So I'm gathering that uh, most of you here are quite happy with your properties. But the thing is, you know, it's, it's important that you recheck and look at it. And I know, you know, as an experienced property person myself with many properties, this is actually something I do regularly and it's something that's really important that you should, you should look at. So that's, I'm just uh, pre-positioning you here with the, uh, the goals because I really want to spend a bit of time on this and I want to give you some tools and some calculations here that you know, I haven't seen in other books or magazines or, or um, 
courses and, and I think they're, they're really going to help you out. So, you know, basically we all know when we look at goals, it's you need to work out what you want, you need to know when you want it by and what you need to do to get there. Now when we're talking about what you want, I'm not talking about I want eight investment properties, I'm talking about I want a passive income of $80,000 a year. By when? That time frame is going to dictate to you how you go about doing it and how you're going to get there. And you know, this in my opinion is kind of like your personal property portfolio GPS. Now we're all familiar with GPSs. Essentially we set a destination, that's your goal. We look at the ways that we can get to that destination in the acceptable time frame to us. So we have a number of different routes that we can get there. Now the different routes to get there are the property investing strategies. But you want to get there on time, so you want to get there at the time frame that you've set for yourself. Basically, set your destination, set the route that works in with the time frame, and then you just follow the path. And that's what I believe when you have this process in place is what you actually do. Now, the thing that a lot of people miss at this stage when we're talking about goals and goal setting, and where I specifically want to get to today because I understand there's quite a few experienced investors online and uh, quite a few experienced investors use Ripehouse. So um, I want to talk to you about your exit strategy. So I'm going to jump from goals straight to exit strategy because you don't really understand where you're going until you actually have an exit strategy in place. Now I've spoken to a lot of people who, you know, the basic exit strategy, and mine was initially, was get to a point in time where I have enough assets to sell off, put the money in the bank and live, live like that <laughs> quite easily. But the, you know, I guess as time goes on, you kind of, you, know, you change what your exit strategy is. So, you know, let's have a really quick poll once again. You know, do you guys out there, do you have an exit strategy? What is your plan? Do you, have you actually thought of what are you going to do? Are you going to sell up everything? Or are you going to actually sell up slowly? So sell up as you need the cash flow to pay down debt, but keep some properties actually growing as well for yourself. So I've got a, a poll open at the moment. Just jump in there and have a, a, a quick vote. Have you thought of an exit strategy? If you have, is the strategy around selling up slowly or is it around selling everything and putting money in the bank? Okay, I'm closing that off now. Interesting, we got uh, pretty much spread across the three of them that you know people haven't thought of the exit strategy. They have thought about selling everything up and others that are actually looking at selling up and slowly. So let's just talk about that. You know, how much money do you really need? And as I said, it does depend on your exit strategy. And you know, the, the most popular exit strategy, and especially for novices and new people when they come into property investing, is the plan to sell everything, put the money in the bank. So what I want to do is just kind of work through those numbers with you. And for those of you who haven't thought of your exit strategy, hey, let's just put you know, pen to paper and, and work out exactly you know, what what you want, how much do you want to retire on. So here's the number. You need to think out, think out loud, but think how much you want to retire on. Now I've got a, a little calculation here that essentially says take that number, that figure, that passive income that you want before tax and times it by 20. And the reason I times it by 20 is they're making an assumption that if you put that money in the bank, you get a 5% return. So obviously you can do a little better at the moment, but let's say a 5% return. So how much do you actually want to retire on? So once again, and I promise this is the last poll, I've got a quick little poll here that says how much do you want to retire on? Is it 30,000 per annum? Is it 50,000 per annum? 100,000 per annum? Or more than that? You know, you really need to be very clear about this and the reason you need to be clear is just buying properties without actually knowing what you're working towards is actually going to get to who knows where. So, you know, let's just assume we've got a, let's say, $50,000 per annum goal. $50,000 per annum times 20 is going to say, is going to equal a million dollars. Now this means that after we sell off all our properties, we need a million dollars in net assets sitting in a bank, earning 5%, and that's before tax, earning 5%, returning 
$50,000. Now, for those of you, and we've got, oh, we've got quite a few people. Most people want over $100,000, so that's really good to see. <laughs> so, uh, most people are saying over $100,000, and, you know, to get the lifestyle that you want, as we know, the couple's pension is $25,000 a year. None, none of us want to be sitting on that. So take that number, the $100,000 that you've just come up with, for instance, times it by 20, there's $2 million worth of assets sitting in the bank. Now, this is where I find a lot of people actually get confused about. They think that means they need $2 million worth of property, and it's not. You need more than $2 million worth of property to sell it off, pay the selling costs, pay your loans off, pay your capital gains tax, and then put the money in the bank. So let's just have a look at that. How long is it going to take? So I've just taken a, a, a property value, and obviously uh, this is a capital city property value, around $660,000. Taken a capital growth of 7% per annum, and I've said, what would be the value of that property in five years' time if we did have 7% per annum? Now, you and I both know that in the last couple of years, depending on where you've lived, 7% per annum seems, seems like the holy grail. It's something that we enjoyed in the early 2000s. It's not something that we've enjoyed in, in the last year. You know, arguably, looking at the numbers and speaking to a lot of economists, you know, it looks like the, the market change may last year, and we're, we're definitely seeing a, uh, a, a rise in the market. Now, I sat John Edwards from founder of Residex down last week and specifically asked him to give me two suburbs in each of the states that had renovation potential and give me the growth statistics. Now, they blew me away. Two of them here in Melbourne were over 9% capital growth predictions in the next five years. So without arguing about is 7% um, the number or not, I'm going to show you the calculation that you can use so you can change it yourself. So instead of sitting there with the 660000 times 1.07, so that's you're adding the 7%, so uh, the 7% per annum plus 1 gives, gives you the ability to add the previous calculation to the next. So $660,000 $660, times 1.07 times 1.07 times 1.07 five times tells us that in five years' time that property is going to be worth $925,000. Now, there's a really groovy little function key on your calculator that allows you to work this out quite easily. And essentially, it's $660,000 times the 1.07, so the 1 plus the percentage growth. And then you find a little key that has an X with a Y above it, and you push that and then press the 5. Now, this, this calculation will then tell you in the number of years. So you can pull out 15, 20. You don't have to keep remembering how many 107s you put in. And it gives you the ability to work out what that property's worth. Now, let's just say you think it's 4% capital growth. $660,000 times 1.04, then push that magic little X to the Y button to the 5. In five years' time, the property's only worth 802000 So we've gone from 7% per annum to 4% per annum, and we've lost about $150,000. What if the capital growth was 10% per annum? We've gone up to you know over a million dollars that, that property is worth in five years' time. So you can see here the ability to understand the value of capital growth and that as a decision maker in your buying criteria and your property investing strategy is paramount to getting to your goals on time. Now we've been quite liberal here in saying you know we, we're looking at what properties are worth in five years' time, but you know it's. It's one of the things that you need to understand the time frame that you're working on. So let's just take you know, the fact that we did a $660,000 purchase. Now, if we said we put in a 20% deposit, so we had 80% of the value of the property um, was a loan, $528,000. If we were sitting there at you know, a, temp, a property that had gone up in value 10% over the five years, we take what that value is at the end of the five years. We take away the loan because we have to pay that back to the bank. And we've ended up with half a million dollars. Now, that's not enough. We haven't covered any capital gains tax, which is a function of what your tax rate is at the time. And we haven't covered any selling costs. So $500,000 whacked in the bank after capital gains and selling costs. We're probably talking about a $13,000, $14,000 per annum income. Not enough, according to everyone who's voted on the polls tonight. So, how much do you need? 
Well, let's just take that median that I talked about was the typical across all of Australia, $444,000, and maybe that is two properties, and we take, you have two properties, and over 15 years, we take an average capital growth of 7.2%, what does that work out to be? So 888,000 times 1.072, which is the function of our capital growth. And remember that little button, x to the power of y, 15, means the property portfolio would go from $888,000 to $2.45 million. So let's just talk about what we borrowed. Let's say that we used equity, which is something that you know, I cover in my finance course, but we use equity, which many of you have probably accessed and, and done previously from your home, to buy that $888,000 property. Maybe 20% of it came against your home or from your home as a line of credit plus the stamp duty costs. So for a $444,000 property, we're talking around 20%, you know, $88,000, and let's throw another $20,000 on top of that for stamp duty and legal costs. So Per property, you probably put in a, a hundred thousand dollars from one loan plus the remaining loan that's secured against the new property. So we're probably talking about a million dollars in loans. So let's take that two point four five million dollar property value, take away the million dollars in loans, and then we need to take away the capital gains tax and selling costs. Now you're looking at a million bucks in the bank. So two properties valued at four hundred forty four thousand dollars sitting in an area that are going up in value on average, some years higher, some years lower, 7.2% for 15 years, there's the million bucks in the bank. So this is the challenge that I throw to you now. And as I said, I really want to give you some tools and things that you can take away. Is For those of you who said you don't have a goal, well, those of you said that you know your goal is to um, buy some properties and sell them all off, here's the calculation for you. For those of you who said that you plan to slow some, to sell some off slowly and pay down debt, you know, as you needed the funds to keep going. You know, you can start with this as the, the basis, but the thing is, it gives you the opportunity to knowing now how quickly you can do the calculation that says, well, hey, you know, that $444,000 property, if it was valued at $444,000, but I bought it at $400,000, gosh, and I made some money when I bought, then it's not going to actually cost me that much. And at the end, I'm not paying back as much in loans. But what if I can improve the value? So what if I could take that $444,000 property that I bought for $400,000 and I added $100,000 in doing a strategic renovation to it? Now I don't have a $444,000 property going up in value. I have you know, a $540,000 going up by 7.2%. And what if I could have better growth? What if I could get the 10% per annum? Fantastic. So you know those three things. What if I could buy below the market, add some value and get better growth is actually what I call my Trident strategy, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. But you know, this is why it's so important, guys, to actually understanding your goals and the time frame to achieve your goals because the reality is that until you have that set and until you know what you're doing with that, it's going to make it really hard for you to keep going and you're going to end up with the wrong property and probably not a strategy, and maybe you can't afford it, and you're going to be one of those disappointed property investors. But we're all here about talking about building a successful property strategy, so and a successful property portfolio. So let's just look at, and um, we're not going to have time to go through in a lot of detail. I can't give you a lot of tools on each of these areas, but you know, I want to, I guess, give you some of the information. And you know, when we talk about property investing strategies. Now one of the, the things that I talk about in my course is that it really comes down to you and what your risk profile is. Now, I was a mining engineer, an explosives expert, and specialised in explosives for over 10 years, and everything came down to risk. And I knew that it was about consequence and likelihood. And everything that I did, every single day, I evaluated with the risk matrix, which was what's the likelihood that it's going to happen and what's the consequence. Now, when I started property investing and I was reading all of these books, it struck me that, you know, with my level of needing to make sure that my little nest egg, and I only started with $45,000, was not going to be lost. So I applied risk measures to understanding property investing. So what's the likelihood there's going to be a one in a hundred year flood? Unlikely. But what's the consequences? Major. So am I willing to risk that? Well, 
In actual fact, no. So how do I minimise that risk? And here's some actions. Not buying a flood zone. Find out where the 100 year floods are. Get ample insurance that covers you know, flooding. So one of the things that I take people through and just in the property investing strategy part of my course is, is actually work out what your own risk profile is and then we go over about 20 different um, property investing strategies and look at what the risks are associated with each. And you have the tools then to work out how you can minimise the risk and still find it acceptable. Some people would never consider, consider developing a property. Others don't see it risky because they know how to work through those, risks, those risky issues. So you know, property investing strategy is an important thing. And I guess you, know, you can all kind of understand what my strategy is. You know, I've renovated over eight times. I've never actually sold a property. I've renovated and held them all. But you know, renovation has been a key to how we've created wealth. And I just want to share with you, you know, one of the renovations that we did. The first renovation, in actual fact, was <coughs> in Melbourne, in Carlton. And as I said, you know, I started with $45,000, so I needed to make it work. So I did lots of research. I ended up buying a property worth $425,000. I renovated it with a personal loan, it was $50,000. So my $45,000, you know, $21,000 went off to stamp duty, pay the Victorian government. The rest of the funds went into my little 5% deposit. I had to borrow the money to the renovation. Within six months, uh, the $425,000 property had gone up in value to $700,000. So I pulled some equity and I went and did it again. And I did it again. And I did it again. And that's how I created my portfolio. Now, that little property back in 2001, is now worth over $1.3 million. So, you know, it's about growing the, the property value, buying below the market and adding value. And, you know, here's, here's a couple of photos of what that looks like. You know, it's around about, you know, creating a welcoming property, you know, creating a place where people wanted to live. Now, we didn't just do one property. We actually bought two properties beside each other. I bought one and my husband bought one as well. You can see here, this is what the before looked like, a nice bench seat toilet. I'm sure it's nice to have if you're going to have company. Um, and, you know, created a lovely modern looking bathroom. You know, went from an older style kitchen, created a modern kitchen. One of the, the mistakes I share in my renovation course is purple feature walls were pretty, pretty hot in 2001, but it's not something I would ever do again. In actual fact, it took eight coats of paint to get over that one. So, you know... We took an old daggy building, you know, built in 1860, two of them in fact, and turned them into you know, a nice modern building. Now, you know, one of them was worth 425 to start with, the other one worth 475 because they had a car park. One's now worth 1.3, one's close to 1.5 million dollars, and, and that's using this process and risk assessment tools to create a portfolio. And as I said, you know. That's my strategy, the Trident strategy, buying a capital growth area, buying below the market and adding equity through renovation. And I know it sounds easy, there's just three things to do, but the reality is most people have one strategy, not three. Me being risk averse, I always want to have plan A, B and C. So if I can't buy it below the market value, I can add equity through renovation and be in a growth area so I know it's going to go up in value. You know, if I you know, predict the capital growth completely incorrectly, I've still bought below the market and made some money when I bought and I've added some money through the renovation and I've got a better rental yield. So, you know, we can talk about property investing strategies, you know, <laughs> I could talk about it all day, but I won't. Um, and I, I realise that uh, we're all on a bit of a time limit here, but you know, once again, you know, finance strategies is the key to actually being able to grow a portfolio and a lot of people miss that and I speak to a lot of people every day through Investors Choice Mortgages, my mortgage broking company and you know they've they've been told by the banks that they can't service anymore and they can't do it anything extra and you know we look at rejigging things around and sometimes it takes a while that a lot of people end up start cross collateralized without knowing they're cross collateralized their bank has um, seemingly done something great for them <coughs> And it takes six months to be able to fix it all up for them and, and move them on. But, you know, finance strategy is so key. This month's cover story of Money Magazine, you know, do yourself a favour, 
grab a copy. Everyone wants to earn $2,500 a week in property and you know we've been conservative in what we've said that we wanted to earn in our goals here tonight. But you know, the reality is that you can do this. Uh, you know, one of the people, uh, we've got three case studies here. I contribute the finance strategy to this Money Magazine uh, cover story. We have a case study for someone who's single and 28, a couple with young kids, mid-30s, and a couple who've got grown kids and closer to 50, and we've looked at how they can do this. There's, someone's actually developed an entire strategy of what to do when. I've developed the entire finance strategy of how to do it step by step for each property, for each um, profile of person, and a buyer's agent has actually told you exactly what properties to buy to do that. Like guys, this is the blueprint. So, you know, the, and when Effie from Money Magazine called me, she said there's no point in telling people where to buy or how to do this unless we have the finance cornerstone fixed up and that's why they asked me to pull this together. So, you know, I can't go into the whole finance strategy. I've got a 100 page manual on it in the course, but um, I just want you to be aware this is where you can actually grab some really good little foundation information now. Um, you know, that brings me to buying criteria and locating the property and gosh, once again, I spend lots and lots of time on how to do this. One of the tools we use is obviously Ripe House. You know, there's 12,000 plus suburbs in Australia and, and people get so confused and paralysis by analysis. And what you need is a few key websites, a few key tools, but more importantly, you need to understand what your buying criteria is before you even start. So if you've got your goal and you understand your property investing strategy, then your buying criteria is going to be set by the market, your property investing strategy and your personal circumstances. So it could be, I am looking for a property that's going to cost no more than $400,000, then I can build a granny flat on the back that is in an area with a 6% capital growth, a 7% rental yield and it needs to be in Queensland. Once you have your buying criteria set down, guys, this is your checklist. This is when you hit the website, hit right house, hit you know the tools and resources that you need to locate the property. And you don't, you're not one of those people who's out there every Saturday frantic in driving around trying to find something because you know the checklist, your buying criteria. It's then that you get to locating the property. Now I do want to share with you because look. Yeah, I just think this is fantastic. Just one quick tool on locating a property that I've just recorded as a tutorial for the upcoming Your Renovation Success course and it was so good. I've put it into this course as well. As I said, you know, the, the five Your Property Success courses that are coming off the market next week, 29th of March 2013, you know, I want to revise them and fix them up and bring them back on the market at the end of the year. But one of the things is people who buy now are going to have all the updates forever. There's lifetime access to these courses. So, you know, as I come up with something that I think is fantastic and it gets added in there, it gets added in. And this census tutorial is just one of those things. Now, I know this is a screenshot of the actual tutorial, me having a bit of a in it, you know, chat about it. But here in particular with the renovation course, I was talking about um, flipping strategies for renovators. Now, a flipping strategy is very different to a buy, renovate and hold strategy. A flipping strategy is targeted at where the majority of the market is, who you want to sell to. The majority of the market is the homeowners. So you want to know specifically where the homeowners want to live. Now, in Census 2001, there was a really great tool that you could use and work out exactly what streets the homeowners were living in in any suburb or town in Australia. 2006, they kind of lost that ability, but the information doesn't change that much within six years. 2011, I was so excited, I jumped into the information and I started working through it. And they've got, you know, you have to log on and you create this table builder and, you know, dead end, dead end, dead end. And then finally, I started talking to people at Census. 17 emails, numerous phone calls. I know I'm the only person in Australia who knows how to do this because Census didn't even, couldn't even show us how to do it until uh, I worked out how to work, it, work through this. So this is, you know, proprietary intellectual property. You can go and spend all the hours and three months that I spent to work it out yourself. This tutorial on how to find the properties is extraordinary. And what I've got in here is I've, I've gone to a postcode. In this case, it's Kingsford. So we've got, you know, um, Ramwick Racecourse, Coogee. 
mascot, Kingsford here, and I wanted to find out exactly separate houses that were owner occupied, and I wanted the greatest per 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 percentage of those. So here's the 50 to 65 percent of people in these streets and the dark red are owner occupiers, and here's one, two, three streets. This is my target area for finding a house to flip. So we've gone from 12,000 suburbs down to using all those extra tools, you know, throwing in ripe house, throwing in all the tools to get down to a suburb, and here's the tool that gets you down to the street. And this is what you need. You know, you need the process. I know that, you know, try it through trial and error, that it's easy to just get overwhelmed, but if you've just got the blueprint that just goes, now do this, 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 and this, it's going to make it so much easier, and gosh, I wish I had it when I started. So, you know, that's, you know, a little bit on locating the property. And then, you know, we get to growing your portfolio, which is always fun. We get to buy more properties. What I encourage you to do, and a lot of people on this webinar are experienced investors, is go back and have a look at your properties that you have bought. Review them, and after every purchase, review, make the repairs. Find out what you did wrong and what you could do better. Repent, you know, you need to have some time to kind of knock yourself around and get over it, and then replicate it. And that's what growing your portfolio is about. You know, as, as Warren Buffett says, if uh, investing is exciting for you, then you're probably doing it wrong. You know, getting down, getting the foundations, getting the groundwork, doing it right every time, that's what it's all about. So, you know, I guess as we come to almost the top of the hour, <clears throat> I just I want to challenge you to think about, you know, do you have your process? Do you know where you're going? Um, we know from the polls that a lot of people here tonight haven't even set their goals. Hopefully some of the tools and um, calculations I've given you have given you enough to think about how you could do that. But you know, the key in my mind is just knowing the process, starting at the beginning, working through specifically what your strategy is that's going to get you to that goal and that time frame, and you know, having the right finance structure, having the buying criteria, understanding how to locate the property, and then grow your portfolio. And, you know, the thing is that you need to be able to work out what you're working towards so that every single property that you purchase fits in nicely and gets you to it. And as I showed, you know, within 15 years, two properties, average properties in Australia at average you know, capital growth can get you a million bucks in the bank. So imagine what you could do if you had a little bit of extra knowledge of knowing where to buy the right property at the right price, having the right finance structure, you could do it a whole lot sooner. So, you know, I guess this evening, you know, what I wanted to show you was some tools that you could use. Obviously, we can't go into everything right now, but, you know, if you want the other pieces of the puzzle and you want that step-by-step -step plan, then, as I said, I'm, I've got a really great bonus for people from uh, Ripe House. Uh, we were just having a casual conversation, Jacob and I, last week when I told him that I was pulling my courses off the market and uh, I have to say <laughs> that the response has been phenomenal. Uh, so many people have been sitting back and just thinking that they could get to them at any time because they're always available. Well, they're not going to be, in, and hopefully we'll have them back by maybe November, December, and the end of the year. People who are buying them now or have bought them in the past have access straight away to them and all lifetime updates. So you buy at today's price and uh, you don't have to pay for the, the higher cost when we uh, spend a lot of money in, in updating and reviewing them in the future. And, you know, I just, I'm going to show you a little bit of what's in the courses. There's five courses. They're online courses. Um, the foundations is where we start, knowing your numbers, locating a property, signing to settlement, and after you buy. Now, the courses themselves, you know, uh, have six modules in each, and they're really about, you know, once you've set your destination and the time frame and your property investing strategy and the route to get there, it's about following the path. And I want to show you the path to follow. And I don't want to specifically tell you to do renovating. It worked for me, but I want to show you all the different parts, all the property investing strategies, and I'll show you the tools so you can work out which one works for you. So, you know, the foundations course, as I said, you know, I'll, I'll show you, actually, I'll, I'll jump straight on and show you what you're going to get as soon as you, you sign up, and you'll get that straight away. But in the foundation course, basically you can read the information online or you can download it and um, print it out as PDF. I have it there as a Kindle and as a iPad version as well. You get about a 100-page PDF if you printed it out for the six modules. You also get a 25-page workbook because I've got exercises in each of these, and I'm not going to dumb it down for you. I'm not going to reveal one a week. You can do it at your own time frame. I've had people do these in weeks. I've had people take months to do them. 
Um, you know, it's up to you, but it's so you can do it in the comfort of your own home at your own pace. So the foundations cover your goals, your property investing strategy and your buying criteria. The second course, Knowing Your Numbers, really gets into that financial structure and understanding how banks are assessing people post GFC and what you can do to actually get your applications approved straight through and understanding how banks are assessing you because most people don't know this kind of secret behind the, the door stuff and I want to share that with you so you can put set yourself up properly and know what the risks are. Then the third course, the fun course, locating the property. You know, we don't get down to the third course until, gosh, what's that, six, nine, probably 15 modules in. So this is all the websites that I use, how I use them and how I go from 12,000 suburbs down to two to three and then down to the street level. Then we get to signing the settlement. A lot of people miss understanding, you know, they've done all this work up front, but they don't realise within that maybe six week period there's so much stuff that you can be doing to optimise, down to, and I'll show you some conditions to add into your letters of offer that can uh, help help you out as well. So there's some really important things in there after you buy. And, you know, this is kind of, when you get to a point where your property portfolio, you realise it's not about time, it's your, oh sorry, it's not about money, your new currency will actually become time. And, you know, to build your, your portfolio, you need to be optimising other professionals. And I'll show you how to do that, but optimising your own skills and time as well. So I'm just going to jump now over to what you get. As soon as you buy the courses, you're going to basically get this kind of welcome. How are you going? Here's the five courses. If you, you can actually buy the courses individually. Um, I wanted to make sure that they were affordable and it wasn't like someone buying a $5,000 course and running away for three, week, three days and all the costs associated. It was important to me because I do have a mission of affecting the wealth of a million people in Australia positively, that it was affordable for the typical person. You know, and we might jump into here, course three, locating a property, module four, <coughs> getting the most out of your internet. You know, go through and we talk about the websites and links to the websites. You know, we can see how to, you get the information. But also what I do in the, so this is course three, module four of the six modules, I give you the download. So here's, you know, there's always bonus material when I think it's applicable. There might be little videos, there might be checklists. If you don't have broadband, don't worry, it's not all video based. I also have, you know, some, um, some extra resources that you potentially could use. So, you know, this is kind of what the course looks like. You can download the information straight away. So, you know, once you kind of jump into the course, you get sent to, you know, what are we pulling up here, course one. You get sent to a little video to show you how to do things. You can download your workbook straight away. You can download your manual, your iPad manual, your Kindle manual. And I give you a couple of, you know, when you see these tools, this is what you're going to see. So that's essentially, you know, what it looks like. Um, you know, we've, we also have a 100% money back guarantee uh, for 30 days. It's really important for me that people can just know that they're looked after and you can have a look around and make sure it's for you. And here's some great little testimonials of how people have used this. Um, I think that, you know, there's some really, some interesting information here about, um, you know, keeping things simple, giving a step-by-step -step plan, making it clear and concise taking the fear of unknown and actually turning it into a you know, definitive process and making the, the way that we can do this um, something that you can follow through at your own pace. You can see here, um, as I said, you always get lifetime updates and access of information. And uh, here's a really great little testimony I just got last week from Stephen Hooper. Actually, you can grab, jump on the website and see if Stephen and his bird Rosie give a little video testimonial. But you know, he was spending years waiting to to actually do a course and do some information, and he was a little bit uh, worried and uh, concerned about jumping in. Now, within a couple of months of buying the courses, going through the courses, working through them diligently. You know, he was able to buy two properties, one below $50,000 below value, one had a, you know, I think a granny flat strategy as well associated with it, you know, and it really you know, gave him everything that he knew, needed to do to, to take him to the next level. So, um, you know, I want to, I want to show you, you know, what these courses are about, um, and I understand I'm getting a few questions here through about finance 
questions as well that I will take in a sec. But, you know, basically the courses are two ninety seven each, so it's about $1,500. I'm taking them off the market next week. As I said, I really want to get out and reach as many people as possible. I'm offering a 33% discount, so all the five courses together are nine ninety five. If you buy them all together without the payment plan, which is uh, split in two, no extra costs over two months, then you'll get the $600 worth of DVDs, which are actually four DVDs from a live seminar that I held. So for instance, the locating a property two hour DVD, I actually take the websites and go specifically into each single one and do a tutorial where we choose a suburb and go down to the specific house. And actually after the seminar, someone drove out that night and looked at the property, which is amazing. I understand as well that you possibly have a lot of um, people in your life that are maybe not as interested in property investing as you are. And so I've created a little online course that allows you to facilitate the conversation so it's not an argument and understanding what the fears are and allaying those fears and talking about the risks and understanding the language of, of how to describe to people what you're planning and doing and how you do it and how making them part of the process. And I'm throwing that in as well. And once again, I'm going to throw in that census tutorial, which I don't even know how you put a value on that. It's just, it, you know, to me, getting down to the number of the street to buy in is just extraordinary. So, you know, as I said, it's nine ninety five. the courses. They're off the market next week. They're, you're going to have lifetime access. People who buy now are always going to have access. And in actual fact, you know, I've got something extra for the people for Ripe House. The first five people who who are actually purchased using the link that uh, Jacob's going to send through to you on the, on the next email. Um, I'm going to offer the, an hour consultation. I suggest you probably take it after you've done the first course so we know exactly what your blueprint is. You've downloaded the workbook, worked through the exercises and we have the blueprint and we have a discussion. I'll personally take you through and help uh, you know, work out where I can best spend an hour of my time in assisting you in your personal situation. I'm also going to throw in a book, one of these books, I'm going to personally autograph it if that's what you'd like. And in actual fact, if you buy before lunchtime on Monday, I'm going, I've got this, I've just been out buying an Easter egg hamper basket so I could send that big hamper off to someone, something randomly generated. So in that in itself is pretty exciting for me. Um, so that's just it. You know, guys, I want to give you some real good content that you can use and take away today and you can put in place now. But I also want to give you the opportunity to I guess look at the courses, how I can help fill in the rest of the puzzle for you and um, you know that's about it. I will answer as many questions as I can. I know we've only got a few minutes but um, you know this is really exciting for me. I, I, my mission is to affect positively the wealth of a million households and uh, I know from the feedback of everyone who's done these courses that you know even those that have been a little bit skeptical, they've gone out and they sign up and my money back guarantee within the first 30 days and you know as I said I really I think the one of the great bonuses of those DVDs the $600 worth of DVDs and hence if you use the payment plan you don't get those but they're they're so great for those people who sign up and decide within 30 days that it's just not right for them or you know the dog got run over or they just can't download it they have all these problems Whatever it is, I insist that you keep those DVDs because I really want to um, make a difference. And you know, we have a concierge service who will be calling you within 24 hours and making sure you have access and uh, keeping checks on you two or three times. We're not here to sell you anything extra. We just want to make sure that you're on track. And I'm not interested in in uh, creating this great content and education for people if they're they're not going to use it. I really I want to be part of your success story as well. So. I guess, you know, as I said, 100% money back guarantee within the 30 days, no reason. If you just don't like it, you get your money back. You know, and I stand behind that. I will try to answer a couple of uh, quick questions now, but, you know, that's my uh, email address. Jacob's going to send you some, some information soon. And, um, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think I managed to cover quite a lot in, in an hour, Jacob, but uh, you, you've got some pressing questions there as well from some uh, people. Jane, uh, it's, it's, it's been amazing content, absolutely. I, I have been t taking, obviously, a quiet approach and listing myself um, with you know, anticipation or blown away with what you've actually been talking about and saying. I think it really, ha having that framework and, and what the courses provide as a framework, 
if I if I'd only known it ten years ago when I sort of started investing, mm. I fumbled around for a long time. <laughs> exactly. And I'm still yeah. still literally recovering from mistakes that I made or yeah. uh, incorrect structures um, and not having those goals in place is the first point. Um, you know, I'm still sort of supporting underperforming properties with well performing properties just because of those sort of bad decisions. Mm. Um, you're not alone, Jacob. You're not alone. <laughs> Actually, there's quite some quite very well-known property educators out there who've confessed the same thing to me. So, uh, yeah, it's about not making the mistake learning from others, right? Isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, and and just to have this as a framework to work to, and for you have been through it, and with the examples that you provide, I think is invaluable. And for you know, having having you on and, and talking on on behalf of and to Ripe House users. Um, you know, I wouldn't have invited you or having or talking with someone. I didn't think that this actually made sense or worked. Um, mm -hmm. And looking in retrospect, just plugging into the gaps of the mistakes I've made would be invaluable to me a few years ago. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Having said that, there are a couple of questions that people have asked. So, um, sure. one of them, and this is sort of something that I, I, um, I'm glad someone's asked it because it's on topic, topic of everyone, tip of everyone's tongues, tongues at the moment is the fixed mortgage. Bargains that are out there, yes. four point nine nine percent. For me and my personal journey, I'll just sort of quickly go off. I've never really wanted to look at fixed um, yeah. because of the inflexibility and having to pay out the, the interest as a contract if you ever wanted to refinance yeah. or um, sell. But this person's asked, is it worth taking uh, a look at these now with the interest rate so low? So. Look, As a mortgage broker, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, well, look, it, look, it, it is such an important question. I, I ran my first solo webinar unsuccessfully, I think, potentially last week on this exact question for an hour. Um, wow. Well, uh, right. And the reason I say unsuccessful because I thought all the eight phones that were surrounding me were turned off and uh, it turned out they weren't. <laughs> but um, in actual fact, what I might just quickly do, I gather you can still see my screen. Yes. I'm just going to go to my website, investorschoice.com.au, and under tools and tips here at the top here, tools and tips, I actually have linked that um, webinar, and I've got a lot of little videos and things here, to fixed rates. And you can go and have a look at oh. that webinar if you want more information. But look, just to give you the courtesy of trying to, to answer, um, you know, your question right now is that you need to understand what affects fixed rates. You need to understand your personal circumstances and you need to understand those risks. So, you know, as we just talked about, you know, the risks um, recently um, that you, you're personally facing, Jacob. A lot of people say anything with a five in front of it is a great rate. And the reason I ran this webinar really quickly was that Westpac uh, came out on Wednesday, on Friday afternoon, very late, and said, we're going to move our 4.99 rate up to 5.29. And, you know, a lot of times we hear that fixed rates start moving six months ahead of variable rates. However, I've been speaking to you know, head economists on National Australia Bank and, and quite a few, you know, John Edwards, about what's happening with fixed rates. I share all of that in this 45-minute training. Um, if you want to even just have a quick little look at the, you know, the latest Australian Property Investor um, magazine, where I talk about whether you should fix rates or not, you know that's there as well. But you know the thing is that 499 is a market grab. It's not a measure that's in six months' time the rates are going up. There's a lot of things that are affecting the uh, interest rates at the moment, and there's a there's a lot of predictions to say there's probably 0.5 to 0.7 cent to come off the market. In addition to that, most lenders are now offering you know 0.85, 0.9, 1 percent discounts on their variable rates up until potentially, you know, when we're talking about borrowing over $750,000 and they usually only offer 0.7% at that amount. So this is you know, some really good variable rates as well and there's lenders offering $750 cashbacks if you move to them. So, wow. um, <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity at the moment but you need to make it specific to you. So obviously you're concerned about, you know, breaking a fixed rate loan you need to understand how the banks do that calculation and the reality is it can cost you thousands. You need to, um, and I actually share in this, in this training um, a, um, an example of one lender that actually has an offset account against a fixed loan that they have. Now there's only one lender that does that 
and I have a split loan with this lender. So I have an offset account with my variable rate and an offset account with my fixed rate. So the variable rates go up, that's where my cash goes in that offset. My variable rate goes down, I'm jumping into my fixed. So it's an advanced strategy. I know you've got some advanced listeners here. I just share it. But you know, do you really get into that detail? I encourage you, head over to investorschoice.com.au, tips and tricks, check out the fixed rate, and, uh, and I think you'd really you probably benefit from that question. Is it an opportunity to rate to put some 499 in? I think there's some opportunity if you don't plan to get out. Um, you know, as I said, Westpac just went up, but ING just came down. And I've got a lender on my panel that's offering 479 for two years if it's if you split your loan 50-50, variable and fixed, and another lender that's doing 499 three year fixed. So funny, isn't it? there's some really good attractive rates and, and uh, you know I think hedging uh, I don't think we're going to see rates go variable rates go up for some period of time, but uh, um, you know I think there's some opportunity to be had. And the, and the I, I guess just sort of yeah. I'd, I'd thank you. That, I mean I'll check out that that, um, that what you're covering here in this link, but it it is that was a really good answer to the question, but I, I suppose relating it back to your content and just what I've seen, mm. um, the flexibility. Um, or fixed rates will be perfect in that period after you've done that sec purchase that second property or that renovation. You've got that ten year gap then until out to the fifteen year mark. Um, you sort of, I think you've answered the question because it, it really does come down to the individual, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. and you can't the go renovation and... stage or the or the maturity stage. Exactly, and you know if your strategy is to say buy, renovate, and hold, and you want to access the equity to buy another property, but you're with the wrong lender. Then you know it might not be that you you have a selling strategy. It might mean that you need to refinance to another lender that has the right policy because you just didn't set up with the right lender in the beginning. Then that's going to trigger a breaking of costs as well, costs associated with breaking the fixed rate. Yeah, yeah. Well, wonderful. Um, we've actually also got another question here, um, talking about the exit strategy and the well, that is a goal, I suppose, as well. At the at the end of it, looking back. You were talking about selling properties. Um, someone's just asked, would you consider reverse type mortgages to access equity um, for cash flow? Um, and what sort of scenarios would that be? Look, it's not something that um, I had a lot of experience in in the reverse, the reverse mortgage uh, area. I have written a couple of reverse mortgage loans and, you know, the, there's a number of different products available and you know, some of it got really confused with some equity sharing as well, where you're actually sharing the equity with the people that you're you're getting the mortgage with. Um, look, I think that by the time that we potentially get to wanting to have an exit strategy that is looking at maybe selling some off and paying down some debt and then, you know creating a bit of cash flow, but also holding some properties in the market, reverse equity, um, reverse type mortgages could work. There are so many, I wouldn't say hurdles, but there are there are a lot of things that you need to have to be able to uh, have a reverse mortgage and the loan to value ratio is quite low as well. So if you have yep. any lending against your property, it may not work for you, but it's definitely something that could be considered, yes. Yeah, wonderful. I guess it just comes back to again to individual circumstances and, and fitting it into in your courses, I swear it all. Yeah. Working out exactly where you are and, and if it's going to suit you at that time. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so, for asking the, in those questions, Jane. No problem. If, if that's uh, all the questions, I guess we, uh, we, I'll, I'll leave it up to you, Jacob, to um, you know, uh, send the people the, that special link that they can, they can click on. And uh, yeah, what, what I'll be doing is, is, yeah, absolutely, I'll follow up with um, to everyone who's attended um, and for the email on to your friends or family who you think might be interested in listening. Um, I'll just take this opportunity, Jane, to really thank you um, and on behalf of the listeners and, and users of Ripe House. It's, it's great information that you have, have shown us today and also it's just the tip of the iceberg with regards to your courses which are coming offline. But as, as you mentioned, I'll be sending an email out with uh, a link to this um, to, to view again or forward and also a link to get into Jane's courses. Um, that link will then uh, enable and um, the special offices that she's been so kind in, in giving uh, Ripehouse 
users access to. And in addition to that, um, and I did mention in my emails, I'll be providing a month's access um, included with that price um, to Ripehouse, uh, and that can be used at any time. So at, at whichever stage in, in the five courses uh, that you're going through with Jane, um, you feel Ripehouse would be of the most benefit, that's when you can plug in the month and just get in contact with me and, and say I'd like to take that up now. Um, but yeah, just finally, I, I really do thank you, Jane, for your time and, and um, wish you all the best for the rest of the weekend. Okay, well, thank you very much and uh, all the best to your listeners. And, uh, you know, there's my email. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be uh, thrilled to help you out. Thanks, Jane.